you wouldn't put this or this or this on your favorite sports car now, would you? By the same token, why would you use these with your favorite retro PC? We're going to take a look at power supplies and discuss some of the differences between older, more retro power supplies and more modern supplies. What's changed, what's missing, and discuss why the older ones work best with the older motherboards. So hang on and here we go. First up, let's take a look at a classic AT power supply. This is from the early 90s, late 80s. It's a compact OEM supply, and it came out of a 486 socket 3 motherboard. Uh, the motherboard only had ISA slots. It had uh, no Visa local bus, but it did have built-in audio, and it did have built-in video. Now, we can take a look at the power specifications on this and see that it actually has a very large 5-volt rail, and then it has the negative 5 volt rail also. And as we discussed, the negative 5 volt rail is generally for those ISA sound cards that require it. Generally, there's not too much demand for the negative 5 volt rail overall. And then it has a smaller 12 volt rail. And the 12 volt, of course, would run the motors on fans, hard drives anything that actually has a moving component. And we have the classic AT power supply hard switch, along with the usual black touches black on the actual power pins going to the motherboard. This one's a little unusual in that it has additional connectors above the normal five pins and I'm not 100% what these are for, and this power supply is very specific to this certain motherboard. I haven't been brave enough to try to plug this into a standard motherboard for the AT style, which would only take these five and then the first five. And then we have our Molex connectors. The total power output of this supply, considered paltry by today's standards, our second power supply up to bat is an early model ATX, and this is a 145 watt supply. Again, note that it has the smaller 12 volt rail, it has the 5 volt and negative 5 volt rail, and then now we're looking at a 3.3 volt rail. Now, the 3.3 volt rail on these early ATX supplies and with these earlier motherboards, this actually came out of a, a Gateway Pentium Pro system. The 3.3 volts is primarily for the CPU and the logic on the motherboard. Uh, more modern motherboards will take the 12 volt rail and convert it to 5 volt and 3.3 volt as needed. But these earlier supplies had all of those rails. As we can see, we do have what's now the classic ATX connector, the 20 pin. We have a good collection of Molex. And I haven't actually been brave enough to leave this in the Pentium Pro system. When I rescued the Pentium Pro, I did put a newer power supply in just because it was a dumpster rescue. And I had a fear of burning out the only Pentium Pro that I have. And the system is in absolutely impeccable shape after some restoration and repairs. So early model ATX. Next up to bat is another ATX power supply, and this one also came out of a gateway. Now this has a 200 watt max capacity, and it does have the 12 volt, the 5 volt, the 3.3 volt. We still have a negative 5 volt rail. This system has ISA slots on the motherboard, and it came out of, surprisingly enough, for only a 200 watt supply, if you think about it, it came out of a slot a AMD Thunderbird 750 gateway model. It's in excellent condition. I did clean and refurbish it, check the caps. And again, we have the classic 20 pin ATX connector. We have a nice range of Molex connectors. And again, I am actively, actively using this in the slot A build.
So we're still looking at a negative 5 volt rail here. Here we have an Antec 300 watt power supply. This came out of an Antec case. And we still have, again, a very strong 3.3 and 5 amp rail. Uh, that's a combined 50 amps. We do have the negative 5 volt rail on this one also. We're still continuing that as the uh, type of motherboards that would have been put in a system like this would have still been some legacy, slot 1, slot A, and uh, some of the earlier AMD Athlon boards, uh, the Athlon XPs, and then maybe some of the earlier, well, and then some of the Intel um, SOCA 370s. Uh, the Celerons, the Copper Mines, and the Tualatins. So we would have still had some ISO slots. And this power supply has a standard 20 pin. However, it's the first one that I have that actually has the additional supply for the motherboard and the CPU. So we're beginning this trend now. And we have plenty of the Molex connectors. This power supply again is interesting because it actually has a supplemental power to the motherboard as some older boards had um, but I've never had a board that actually required this for actual use. Note that we still do not have any SATA or SATA connectors on our power cord. Next up in our timeline we have a Dynex power supply and this is advertised as a 400 watt. And I want to point out specifically that this power supply has dropped the negative 5 volt rail. We do have a quite strong 3.3 volt at 30 amps and a 5 volt at 28 amps for a total of 58 amps of that power. But again, no negative 5 volt. I have used it on older motherboards that have the ISIS slots. I haven't uh, had any issues with that. I know there are certain sound cards. Uh, Phil actually put out a video about sound cards that require the uh, negative 5 volt rail as they tend to get some noise or don't actually function correctly. Uh, but then there are other cards that it doesn't even bother. The power connectors on this one, again, we have the 20 pin ATX, this time with the supplemental 4 pin for the mother, motherboards of that era. We also starting to get, in addition to the Molex, we're starting to get the SATA connectors. So this is a much more modern power supply, in addition to additional supplemental power for video cards and for other motherboard connectors of the time. So more modern and we've dropped the five volt rail. Next up in our timeline, we have an Antec. It's a True Power Trio. This is advertised as a 650 watt maximum power supply. This one also came out of an Antec case, one of the older uh, Soho server type cases. And it does not have the 5 volt rail. It has a, I don't know if you'd call it decent, but it, it does have a fairly solid 5 volt and 3.3 volt at a total of 48 amps. And then the 12-volt rail on this is quite strong. And we actually have on this one three 12-volt rails. We have um, one, two, and three on the 12-volt rails, um, which is, again, indicative of a more modern supply. And the connectors on this one you'll recognize as much more modern. We have the 24-pin ATX with the breakaway. We have a good collection of Molex. We, of course have a very good amount of the SATA connectors. And then we have quite a decent supply of the additional connectors for video cards. And this was the era when uh, we started to have to power our video cards. So, very nice Antec power supply. This specific supply, a Tagen or Tagen, I know they're out of business currently, um, came out of a scrapyard rescue of mine. It was a Pentium 4 motherboard, and I believe it was one of the uh, Pentium 4 extremes, uh, clocking, I think, around 3.2 gigahertz. Now, this supply, 
has a very strong 3.3 and 5 volt rail for a total of 76 amps, which is actually the strongest power supply I have for the 3.3 and the 5 volts. It does have two 12 volt rails also. And again, like I said, um, So this is an interesting power supply. It's a Tagen or Tagen model. Uh, it did come out of a scrapyard rescue. It came out of a very high powered, for that time, Pentium 4 Extreme uh, 3.2 gigahertz system. And interestingly enough, with all the modernity of this power supply, it still has a negative five volt rail, which is very interesting to still see this this late. But this power supply actually has it all. Now. It is advertised as a total 480 watt power supply. And if you note, the 3.3 volt and the 5 volt rails are extraordinarily strong with 76 total amps. And then we do have two separate 12 volt rails. And again, in addition to the negative 5 volt, it has a ton of connectors. And another interesting thing is it actually has period looking connectors. So we have our ATX. And then, of course, we have our supplemental ATX pin to make it a 24. It has plenty of connectors for powering up video cards and additional add-ons of the time. And the actual Molex connectors actually have the ketchup and mustard wires and the actual white connectors. So in addition to looking modern, it actually has some of the original look. This actually is my favorite power supply currently. There's nothing wrong with it I've ever been able to determine. Everything being tested with a multimeter, it, um, it sends great power out. And this is the last one that I have that has a negative five volt connector. And last but not least, I've been using a lot of these EVGA power supplies lately in my um, more modern builds. We're talking anything, oh, anything, socket 939 and above uh, on the Pentium side, anything core two and above. I've been using these in various outputs. Uh, the EVGAs, uh, this bronze series, they're extraordinarily inexpensive and they're fairly highly rated for what you pay for them. This is a 460 watt supply and the 3.3 and the five volt rails only give us a total of 40 amps. It does have two 12 volt rails It has one 12 volt rail where all the power is actually lying. And again, remember that with these on the more modern motherboards, the motherboard itself is generating the additional current needed. So if it needs any additional 3.3 or five, it's able to generate itself on the actual motherboard. So these are nice, but whether or not, you know, you hear all these anecdotal sayings, that you need a strong negative five volt rail, you need a strong five volt rail, you need a strong 3.3 volt rail. For a lot of the retro systems, a supply like this might give you grief. Now, what kind of grief are we talking about? We're not talking about anything catching on fire or blowing up. Uh, what we're talking about is insufficient power potentially to some of the older motherboards, um, the slot ones, the slot A's, um, in that if they're not receiving sufficient power, they may fail to boot, they may boot intermittently, there may be issues with the system running, there may be errors. It's just about them being undervolted and underpowered. So the idea is to keep the retro power supplies as many as you can, as long as you can, as the more modern ones might not be up to snuff.